Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. We have recently conquered, well, Lisa and I have conquered Bardem's Middle. And the boys are kind of lagging behind a bit, so I hope they're okay. Come on, I want to hear the juicy gossip! Oh, come on, cutscene! Why are you gonna interrupt this? I like the idea of them being besties. I know I wanted at the end of Heaven's Ward for Tataru and Alizé to be besties, but, well, that idea got completely thrown out the window. At least all the way right now. Mission accomplished. Everything's still in one piece? More or less, I. That mountainous monstrosity came as quite a surprise. Who knew that the steppe held such secrets? I see the two of you emerged similarly unscathed. Well then, by my reckoning, there is naught left to prevent us from taking part in the Nardam. Uh, hi. I'm sorry I had to kill a bunch of you before, but you were stalking me. You! Yea, you who have walked Bardem's metal. Newborn warriors of the steppe. Our Han demands an audience. You will come. I remember those clothes. He's Oranir, isn't he? What should we do? Ordinarily, I would politely decline, but this may be an opportunity to assess their strength. And we do have some time before the Nardo begins. If it all goes to plan, they will be fighting for us soon enough. What say you? Shall we go and greet our comrades-to-be? Um... Okay. Don't like the looks of this, but... Whatever happens, we shouldn't keep Siren and the others waiting. Let's be ready to make a swift exit, all right? We accept Johan's generous invitation. Lead the way. Well, it's not really an invitation so much as a demand. No, we said lead the way, not continue walking toward us. Is this an audience or a kidnapping? Two banners. So it's not just Oranir we're dealing with. Well, there's those other guys in those other funky clothes, too. Most radiant brother Magni, we have brought the ones you seek. Hi. You conquered Bardem's metal. Yes. As warriors of the Mall, I. You were the Han here, yes? Why have you summoned us? Mayhap to propose a joint endeavor? Nay, Doman, we shall not speak as equals. Born of the sun are Oranir, and born of the earth are you. 
When I learned of trespassers, I bade my warriors take their measure to flay them if they failed. But if by the grace of Azim they should survive their trials and emerge anointed, then bring them hither to pay tribute. Tribute, should it prove satisfactory, shall earn you the favor of the sun. His beloved shall bask in his radiance, and their supplications be duly considered. Okay. So you want us to bow down and serve you? What if we don't feel like it? Oh, dang, Lise. The Defiant will suffer in shadow. It would be an affront to the resplendent Azim himself to refuse this generous offer when by rights you should be condemned. But in lieu of tribute, swear fealty to the sun. Pledge to him your body and soul. Promise to serve him unto death, and you may know his glory. Uh, did we not make it clear? What if I don't feel like it? A generous offer granted to but few. Though perchance this is too merciful. Hmm. It seems our brothers of the Buddhaga want you. The men only. Like the Borlack and women. Though you know them not either, I'm sure. No matter. All you need know is that you will serve one way or another. That much does indeed seem plain. However, as we are but newborn warriors who know little of your customs, we struggle to conceive of ways in which we might be of service to the most gracious and illustrious son. You make mock of us, Doman. Do not do so again. Well, if you want us to serve you, you need to give us explicit instructions on how to do so. You made it clear that you're aware that we don't really know your customs. So, if you're not gonna speak plain well, English, then it is his right to question why you are not doing so. You will be given a task. It will be difficult. You will carry it out. When you have accepted this, you may ask me what it is. Yeah, we kind of figured that from the start, so what is it? That is literally what we're asking. What do you want us to do? Ah. So, this is the part of the Azim step which I am not happy with at all. And for a multitude of reasons. And this here is the beginning of them. All right, so what do you want, jerk? All right. Wait, 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 why why do I have to aid you in your preparations? I believe I am associated with the mall and not you. So they really had should have made this a tiny bit more explicit, but the succinctness will suffice just enough that this tribe over here that they are allied with they are a tribe of men only. They do not care for anything other than men. That's why he's kind of like, you know, pointing out the fact that we're a woman and he's not offended by this. This guy, on the other hand, probably is. 
Yeah, see, I have a vagina and therefore he does not like me. But since they, the tribe is consisted only of men, they obviously cannot recreate their own numbers by, you know, the cycle of life that everybody, every other culture tends to increase their numbers and thus they literally, well, enslave and trade men to join their tribe. And there is subsequently another tribe that he mentioned that is kind of similar that is comprised only of women. And the lore book will further elaborate that there is another tribe that actually they're semi-allied with that they that follows them around. And this other tribe, you know, that doesn't like men, they pretty much give up their, I think it's about a year old, newborn sons to this other tribe that follows them, which care for them and assimilate into their own culture in return or something like that. Um, how deep they are in the ew man thing, well, they obviously procreate and stuff like that, but seems more of just a girl trip power tribe to me, but uh, I don't remember other exact words from the lore book, so if anyone wants to correct or add information, feel free in the comments. So what must I do? Are we gonna have a staring contest, that is? Or you can just walk away. Okay. Dude, 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 you, you asked us to, like, not mock you, okay? We're trying to actually educate ourselves about your culture. <sighs> Can you not be jerks about it? Well, we've already picked up, well, literal crap, so... Suppose milking your cattle and sheep is well, fair enough chore, I guess. Um, okay. Well, you were also shirtless, so that really doesn't help me right there. See, see, Ornir, what happens when you're not a jerk to somebody? They respect you more. So I believe this scene goes by, or is it later? Um, there's some scenes that go by, the dialogue is slightly different, obviously depending on if you are a male or a female character. Where is the freaking door? Um, but otherwise, the end result is the same regardless. I can't remember if it's there or a quest later. But where it ends up is completely irrelevant, because, as I said, it, it, it makes no deviation in the story, just in the dialogue. So I love how they're... wrestling over here. I, I have to say, I do, I do... as much as... I actually need to tune the Aetherite before I forget. As much as I really hate the part of the narrative, I kind of am fond a bit of the Dawn Throne, mainly because it is it is kind of a big place and you do get to see a bit of a wide variety in, you know, the types of people here, even if they're all joined the same. Like here you have children's partaking in lessons, you have, 
you know, different people watching over and arm wrestling and stuff. You have livestock grazing in the fields, and I'm just gonna get this Aether Current. I don't think I've ever gotten any Aether Currents in this area as of yet. I haven't even gone looking at all in all this time. But, you know, like, you have supplies, you get some yurts. I'm not sure what's up with this ornate brick building, because it is rather unique among the architecture here. You know, I get this dude and or... You a dude or you a lady? Uh, I can't tell from here from the dark, playing a musical instrument. There's also one of those among the mall, by the way, too. This place is just so much more e easier to see, because just the area is so just massive. And I'm glad they you know, sprinkled it with, with bits of life rather than keep it barren. Get the boys over here doing exercises. Meditation. Loner guy against the wall there. You look like a shady fellow right there. We have some vegetation up here. Not much. Not that I was expecting much. You know, guys practicing archery. More people. Wrestling. And now we're back to the same place. Okay. Oh, you're gonna ask me my name. Thank you. Maybe you're not as much of a jerk as Brother Magni over there was. Okay. Well, lucky for you, I have blessings from different gods and can totally breathe underwater. So, you couldn't have picked a better person for this job. I mean, I suppose at least could have sufficed as well. And... I was supposed to talk to that guy first. <laughs> Look at the schools of fishies, though! Come on! That's, that's totally awesome, isn't it? We'll just have to teleport back up, and then we can dive back into the water. Maybe I just like doing this, okay, guys? Alright, okay. Okay, now we're gonna do this the proper way, I guess. Through the... Elevator? Question mark? Uh, it's probably an elaborate staircase or something like that on the inside. But yeah, now we can actually go to and forth from the Dawn Throne. Before we could not. The gate guard would just be like, nah. So one thing I wish they elaborated on in this place was, yeah, they have horses here. This is where the horses come from. And even though we met a horse dude in Reunion, sadly we don't really get involved with the horses at all. There is no point in the main scenario where you actually get to ride a horse. There are two points in the game where you actually can. One is during the warrior uh, job quest, and the other is for another beast tribe quest. Although it is because it is a random quest, I've actually never seen it myself. And it is a shame because the quests related to that are one of the funniest damn things. It's really almost a disappoint. It's it's really just such a disappointment that it's at no part, you know. Well, like we don't even get to like groom the horses or anything like that. I think there's actually a bunch of horses on the Dawn Throne too. I probably miss those. I know they exist, but like we had a whole plot point in A Realm Reborn about you know the Dome and Children seeing a chocobo for the first time and having to deal with, you know, the unique smell that. The Domans just were not used to and not fond of. And we don't get 
Like, they even called them horse birds, and we don't get anything about the actual horses. I don't think, like, people, like, in the MSQ, like, even some go so far, much far as to comment on it and compare them to the Chocobos or anything like that. I mean, I have to assume they're, they, they can be found in Yangsha as well, because obviously, you know, the dolmens don't really come to the steppes, so they, they must exist elsewhere on the continent as well, but, like, there's, it's just such a missed opportunity, I think, like, even just for flavor dialogue, it feels just so barren to be without it, you know, like, finally, instead of riding literal birds as your steeds, we actually have, like, legitimate, just ordinary horses in a fantasy game, and we do nothing with this? Like, it's just such a disappointment. Like, I don't even get to ride one. Like, I don't get to pet one. I don't get to watch somebody, like, you know, struggle to train or put... Well, I didn't see any of those guys with a saddle but or reins on them. But just something similar to that. Like, maybe describe, you know, do, do the mall have them and use them to help them transport from one place to the other? Because, well, they have... They're, they're nomadic. I mean, you have the buffalo creatures that, you know, can do the job just as well, but, like, there's not mention of that or anything anywhere. And I just feel like it's just, just a complete waste, you know? Like, I know that's, it's, it's a really, it's, it's just horses, it's just a minor thing. But we have, oh shit, and I can't fly here, so I'm just gonna teleport back up rather than take the gate. Like, we, we finally have some unique wildlife that and, and domesticated life that doesn't exist in Eorzea, and, and it's just a shame, you know? Like, with all this other care that, that, that went into the culture here, like, that's one thing that they should have included, you know? Okay. Well, thank you for telling me what it was, you know, for. I certainly appreciate your honesty. Hi, Jerkwad. I decided to pick some grass from underwater. Yeah, can that be our boon? Let's get the heck out of here. If you weren't intending to press us into service, why did you ask us here and, like, be like, <laughs> I'm going to give you a task. It's going to be hard. Can you do it? I don't get your logic here. You don't mean to press us into service, but what we have done is not good enough for us to leave. So are we prisoners or are we not? Like, th this, this is one of the aspects that just really just, just grinds my gears about this whole point in the MSQ that is going to drag on. Cool.
Yeah, that's a good question. So we'll do that real quick, I guess, before we end today's episode. Oh, shut up, you. I am not fond of Magni in the slightest. Aha! Uh -huh, so ulterior motives. I like the way you think, Ian. I really, I have, I have to say, I have to enjoy his whole plan on this, you know. Like, hey, you win, you win, you win the Nadam, you're the boss of the steppe, and he wants to use this to gain ourselves, you know, what, an instant army of warriors to fight back against the Empire. And we're just completely exploiting their, their culture in, in doing so. And it's, it's kind of a dick move, but it's also a very practical one. Yeah, see, here's the horses. Hello. Oh, I forgot about this part. This kind of stuff is what makes this part of the story just drag on. Why is this important? Why do I need to perform a pointless errand on top of the story already biting for time until the Nadam happens? Because that is the next major plot point, is we, we're just sitting around waiting for the Nadam to happen. And that's it. Like to learn about to learn a bit about more about their culture for both world building purposes and for the practicality purpose of, hey, you know maybe we can actually put this to use, in the bottom for ourselves, and that's fine. But like, oh god, it just how is finding sheet for the elder gonna do this for me? Like he's not asking for like. Payment or, or anything like that. It's literally no I won't talk to you because my sheep have gone missing and I'm too damn lazy to actually go and find them myself yeah. I do appreciate that you know At least he and is is actively seen helping us find the sheep It's one of those little little nice touches that is much appreciated in what is an otherwise completely pointless side quest. <coughs> How we're convincing these lost lambs that hey, your mom is looking for you kind of thing? Nah, and I have no idea. Maybe we're just startling them and in fear they just run back to where they need to be I don't know that's not really important <sighs> all right I found your dang livestock Yes. Tell me about your faith, if you please. Oh, we're gonna have to repeat what he just told us.
And of course, my carbuncle slippers are clipping through my legs. And, um... There's gonna be more cutscenes where we're kneeling like this, and it's hard to take them seriously every time the camera cuts back to me, so I'm gonna apologize for that. But, it's one of those things that, like, you, you, you just have to let go, because it is annoying, but yet hilarious at the same time. Aww, that's sweet. Okay. I suppose that makes sense, you know, if you're gonna defend them, you have to prove that you are worthy of defending them, I guess. Even if you divinely believe that, but still. Doesn't help to, you know, doesn't hurt to prove it with your actions, you know? Oh? Cool. Alright, so hopefully your dialogue is really short here so I can finish this quest and finish the episode without dragging on too long as I have been want to do lately. So yeah, th this this does, you know, again, like Ian said, explain their arrogance. They they divinely believe that, you know, they were sent here to watch over the children of the step. And it's that it's literally their their job and their and their duty to to actually do so. So I can kind of respect some of that and, and from from that certain point of view. But and this is where the story really kind of annoys me. Is, remember how I mentioned a while back that Yugiri is not present in any of this? Why not? Why not have one of the, as, as per, per the beliefs of, of the Aura culture as a whole, a literal daughter of Zim just stand before him? Will, would Magni, you know, change his tune a bit? Like, how would he, how would he feel about such a thing? How would the Orin here fear, feel about such a thing? Would, would they just not care because they're of the Zela? Or would they, do, do they, you know, kind of revere and, ex you know, respect the rain because they are also, you know, children of Azim and whatever. And that's something that is completely never, ever elaborated on in the main scenario. I don't recall if it is in the side quest or not, but for the sake of, 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 you know, our retrospective and critique, we don't really care about the side quest information, and frankly, I don't recall it at all, but if it was of any importance, and it frankly should be, it should be in the main scenario. And that is why I feel, not only for, for her lack of overall character development that is going to continue throughout Starblood that disappoints me, but this is such a good opportunity to actually not only give that to her, but give some perspective 
to not o- not only the rain, which we've only seen one small settlement of, but you know, as you know, a comparison to their counterparts in in the Zela, and it's it's just I it's one of those completely wasted absolutely wasted opportunities and it's one of the things had they put into this area that might have made me much more interested and I would find this place much more compelling and instead I don't I'm I'm just left wishing for for what might have been asking why they don't include this especially when you know being the children of Azim is such a huge thing to the Orinir and yeah, we're just not gonna mention that we have a close friend and an ally who should be considered, you know, part of it, and it just goes completely unaddressed. So that's enough of my whining and complaining for the day. Um, we might want to cut down the steam a little bit before we, we talk to, to Magni about what we have learned about his, his culture and his people. So thank you for watching, my friends, and I shall see you next time.